It's game day. It's 49ers. It's Seahawks. This is going to be a great matchup between two division rivals. Who's going to come out on top? Who's going to be potentially leading the division after this football game? We're going to talk about what happens in this football game, all the key matchups, all the bold predictions, and then at the end, I'm going to tell you who I think is going to win this game. It's going to be a fun episode of 49ers Cutback. at the stick from who's got it better than us to brick by brick it's always the 49ers way from off season to game day yeah we talk back it's the 49ers cut back It's 49ers Cutback Podcast time. Welcome to the show, everyone. Game preview, 49ers versus Seahawks. We're just a matter of hours away from the 49ers getting to play their division rival Seahawks, and it hasn't went well for the 49ers so far in the division. And they've got to right the ship, and they've got to right the ship right now. They have to make sure that they handle the Seattle Seahawks and get a big win and improve to 3-3. Three and three. And when they do that, they could potentially make the Seahawks go to three and three. So 49ers know how big of a football game this is. You can't afford to go 0 and three in the division. That is not good. Even if you won uh, the remaining divisional games, you would still finish with a 500 record and no guarantee that you would be able to win the division. Now, first goal is always win the division. Your second goal is to be able to get the number one seed. The number one seed looks a little bit more distant right now. 49ers haven't been able to win within the conference. They've been losing to the Minnesota Vikings, Los Angeles Rams, Arizona Cardinals. Their two wins are against AFC teams. They have to get it going this week. They need a win over the division rival Seattle Seahawks, and it's not going to be easy. Seattle has been playing pretty well. They've gotten some big victories this season, late second wins, doing what they need to do to win. And Geno Smith has been playing really good so far this season. Geno has been completing passes at over 70%, and he's been finding DK Metcalf, Tyler Lockett, and Jackson Smith and Jigba for big throws and catches. So Geno is playing at probably the top of his game that he's capable of playing right now, and the 49ers defense has been giving up some points that they don't really want to give up. Now, they've been put in some tough situations. The 49ers defense right now is fifth best in DVOA, which means... When they have good situations, they play really, really well. And so their yards and things are normally coming in bad situations, short fields, those types of things. So overall, the defense has been playing better. And the offense last week really sputtered for the 49ers. So this is going to be a fun one. Please like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I really appreciate it. If you're listening to audio platform, 49ers Cutback on Believe Network, please give it a five-star rating. And if you're going to bet... Bet with Bet Online. Bet Online is the world's most trusted betting platform and number one source for everything sports betting. Every stat, matchup, breakdown, and even live odds and spreads to bet on during the games. With the largest catalog of odds on everything from football to Major League Baseball playoffs, NHL, NBA to political props. When the game's over, head on over to our online casino and get in on a game of blackjack or poker or unwind with one of our over 150 slot games. Head to the website today to get in on the action with America's most trusted site for online wagering. Bet online. The game starts here. So I always like to start with some of the things that are going on with these football teams, you know, with with what's going on with um, how each team is going to coach, which injuries they're dealing with. And that's what we're going to be talking about here. 49ers versus Seahawks. Let's get into this. It's going to be a lot of fun. The 49ers are going to have some players out in this football game, and they've suffered some key losses, but so have the Seattle Seahawks. You look at the 49ers, they're going to be without starting defensive tackle Jordan Elliott. Of course, Hargrave out for the year. Now they're without Jordan Elliott as well. Linebacker, starting linebacker, Demetrius Flanagan Fowles, he's going to be out. D. Winters likely to step into his role. And for the defensive tackle spot, it should be Kevin Given stepping into the starting lineup. 49ers defensive line is going to have to do a good job. Kalia Davis, who came back last week, 
Let's see if he can return to form. And then the 49ers will obviously elevate at least one defensive tackle. Is it going to be Evan Anderson? Is it going to be T.Y. McGill? As of time of this recording, I don't know who it's going to be, uh, but it'll be one of those guys, and they'll be helping this football team. Talador Ufonga was added to the IR. He's going to be out for at least four weeks with a uh, wrist injury, torn ligaments in his wrist. And then Jake Moody is out as well with the right ankle sprain. Now, questionable for this game are Chris Conley with an oblique. Last week, he did not play because of the oblique, but has a chance to play this time. And Charvarius Ward, who's dealing with a bone bruise. So we'll see. Charvarius Ward has been huge in this matchup over the last couple of years, being able to stick with DK Metcalf and battling him one-on-one. -on -one. And the 49ers have been willing to put Mooney Ward out there with DK and say, hey, go slow him down. And for the most part, Mooney Ward has answered the bell. But Mooney Ward hasn't played very good this season so far. He's self-admittedly not lived up uh, to his expectations for himself. And I think if everyone's honest, they know that Mooney Ward hasn't played the best football. It doesn't mean he can't round into form, though. And sometimes putting someone out there with a tough assignment and going one-on-one -on -one can definitely get them back into their winning ways. And hopefully that will happen for Mooney Ward in this game. Seattle's not without injury. They're going to be without their young defensive tackle, Byron Murphy. He's going to be missing this football game, so he's out. Linebacker Uchina Unwusu, uh, he's dealing with a thigh. He's likely to go on IR if he hasn't already. And then cornerback Tariq Woolen is dealing with an ankle. He's out of this game as well. Now, they have some questionables as well. Linebacker Derek Hall, he's dealing with a foot. Uh, Julian Love, their safety, dealing with a hamstring. And linebacker Boye Mafi, he's dealing with a knee. Now, Mafi's got a chance. Last week, he didn't play, but he's got a chance to play in this football game. So both teams are dealing with injuries, and it seems like injuries are kind of the thing in the NFL right now. It's a war of attrition, and who's going to have the players necessary to get it done at the end? It's going to be interesting. Now, let's talk about the coaching staff. We're so used to normally coming in here and talking about Pete Carroll. Of course, Pete Carroll is not with the Seattle Seahawks anymore, and they moved on to a younger uh, defensive-minded coach in Mike McDonald. So the philosophy as far as defensive-minded doesn't change, just the person who take the helm is. And McDonald comes from that Baltimore Ravens defense that was very good. And last year, they gave the 49ers fits, causing Brock Purdy to throw five interceptions in that football game on Christmas Day. Brock Purdy's low point in his career, I would say. And so McDonald comes in with an ability to give some problems to Brock Purdy in the Kyle Shanahan offense, at least in that game on Christmas Day. Now, he doesn't have the same talent. He doesn't have the same players that are going to be able to push the same buttons for this defense. So it's going to be a little bit different. He's still trying to build this defense. Now, once he does, who knows how good they could possibly be, but they're not without talent. They have a lot of talent on this football team, and he's a very talented defensive mind who's going to have a good game plan for Kyle Shanahan. The one good thing, neither one of these coordinators have had the opportunity to really put in an ex extensive game plan because of the short week. So planning for... 49ers and Brock Purdy could be a little bit more difficult for Seattle, and they just suffered a huge loss last week against the New York football Giants. So they're going to be looking to come back in and get a big win, but they haven't had as much time to prepare for the 49ers, and it is a different coaching staff. Now, offensive coordinators Ryan Grubb. Uh, Grubb comes over from the Washington Huskies last year. All the things that he was able to do with Michael Penix Jr., just explosive offense, took him all the way to the national championship game. And he brings that same philosophy that he had there where they throw it around a lot uh, into the game plan for the Seattle Seahawks. So it's going to be a different look offense from what the 49er fans normally see from Seattle, especially under Pete Carroll. There were a lot of times where there was so much conversation about letting Russ cook because Pete Carroll loved running the football and he loved running it a lot. Run the football, play good defense. That was kind of his calling card. Well, they'll open it up a little bit. And Grubb is letting Geno Smith uh, whip the ball around a little bit. So he's throwing the ball a lot, and he's got weapons to do it. Metcalf, Lockett, and Jigba, very talented wide receiver room. Good tight end in Noah Fant. So they're very talented when it comes to skilled players. But they've got to also give the ball to Kenneth Walker. Kenneth Walker is one of the more dynamic running backs in the league when healthy. He's dealt with an oblique this year, and that has slowed him up a little bit. But he is one of those guys that's elusive and tough to bring down and can make something out of nothing. 49ers were worried about that last week with James Conner. They did a good job in the first half. Second half, tackling suffered, and James Conner got going. 
You can't allow a duplicate performance of that because Kenneth Walker can hurt you, and he can hurt you with big plays if he's able to get loose. So uh, 49ers got to make sure they stick on Ryan Grubb's uh, scheme, and they make sure they stick to what they're supposed to do, slow down that passing game, and slow up Kenneth Walker and the run game. Now, Ryan Grubb also spent time in Fresno State, so right in our backyard, he was there from 2017 to 2021. So, um, you know, if, a kind of familiar name around these parts to what he's been able to do. Now, let's talk about the offensive game plan and offensive keys for the 49ers. And it starts with getting the run game going. And you might say, that's the goal every week. And it is. And last week, unfortunately, the 49ers weren't able to get the run game to the point they wanted it to. They had to throw the football a lot more than they intended. And why was that? Well, the Arizona Cardinals did a good job of giving the 49ers looks that were very pro-pass. We're going to make you check out of your run looks. And when you do run the ball against our heavy looks, our six-man fronts, our uh, five-three looks with eight guys in the box, you're not going to be as successful. Now, why aren't you as successful? Because you can still run with heavy sets against those looks. Well, it just makes it a little bit more definite. You have to be really good with your skills, you have to make sure you win one-on-one -on -one battles, and you also have to make sure you're seeing the hole because it's not going to be as big and significant as it normally is. More bodies mean less space. And so that was what was happening to the 49ers last week. It was a combination of missed blocks and with lack of execution from your running backs finding key holes that slowed up the 49ers' run game. They need to get it back to form this week. And I fully expect the Seattle Seahawks to load the box and try to put the onus once again on Brock Purdy to win this football game. Make him make throws. What they want to do is they want to load up the box. They want to take away the middle of the defense, and they want to make him throw outside consistently and look for those plays vertically down the field. When you do that and you make him put pressure on him to play, make those plays down the field, it gives the defensive line time to get home and potentially get to Brock Purdy. And it makes him scramble, come off his timing. And so that's what it's all been about this year, disrupting timing, taking away middle of the field, taking away the 49ers' run game for the most part. Now, here's the interesting part of that. That has been the game plan for all these teams, yet no one has really taken away the 49ers' running game. The 49ers are averaging 144 yards per game. Jordan Mason has been one of the best runners in the league as far as yards. And I feel like he's leaving a lot of yards out there on the field that he can still get better. With more experience, he'll probably get more yards and have a better season overall. So the 49ers are going to try to get this run game going. I expect them to go to more heavy personnel sets. Go to 21, go to 12, and now go to 22 personnel. 49ers can load up with two running backs and two tight ends, especially with some of the injuries to the Seattle Seahawks defense. We talked about Byron Murphy going to be out, but he's not the only one that's out. They also have Cameron Young out. He's going to be missing. They've had other players like Inuosu. He's out. They are dealing with a lot of injuries up front. Now, they're still very talented when you look at their defensive line. Darren Reed, Jonathan Hankins, Leonard Williams. Those guys are absolutely great. But when you look at the edge part of their defense, Boye Mafi, we'll see if he's going to play. He's questionable. If not, you're going to get Travis Gibson playing out there. So there are definitely injury concerns for the Seattle Seahawks in this matchup. And the 49ers have to go out there and press on those injury concerns and press on those weaknesses and run the football. Jordan Mason has to have success in the run game so that way the 49ers can have success on offense. I brought up the 49ers are averaging 144 yards per game on the ground. The Seahawks are giving up 128. So it's another poor run defense that the 49ers are facing. Last week, the Arizona Cardinals, same thing. So what did the Cardinals do? They puffed up. They got everyone in the box, and they said, hey, look, we're just going to give you looks that make you want to throw the football. This week, I expect Seattle to try to do that too. What will the 49ers do? Will the 49ers be willing to run the football? Will they be willing to just you know grind this thing out? I think it could be a return to 49ers old school form where they go in there and they say, you know what? We're going to run the ball sometimes against eight-man boxes. We're going to have success running the football at you. Now, I do think against this particular defense, you want to get the ball rolling to the outside zone. So getting toss plays outside zone could be what the 49ers try to do in the run game. And then off of that, come with some play action for Brock Purdy. 
move the pocket, allow him to get a little bit of a boot, and find those receivers in flood patterns. But you have to have the run game rolling so those linebackers will engage and come up. You need them to engage on trying to stop Jordan Mason in the run game so you can find some openings behind them in the middle of the field. Now, defenses have been more than willing to take their safeties and put them in the middle of the field and try to take away those crossers. But there's still the low-level crosser that's open that the 49ers can hit. And then when the safeties do that, take advantage of them vertically down the field. And Seattle's going to be without Tariq Woolen in this game. So they're going to be missing one of their key contributors at cornerback. So they're going to have younger players in there uh, potentially to play. So without Reek Woolen in there, 49ers have some matchups I'm sure that they like. Now, they still got very talented Devin Witherspoon. Uh, he's going to be there. Trey Brown, he's a talented corner as well. So they got guys that can come in there and play, but they're not Tariq Woolen. The size, the speed, the athleticism, it's a little bit different when you're talking about those guys. Uh, Julian Love's dealing with a hamstring. He will probably play, but him and Rashawn Jenkins are going to be tasked with slowing down George Kittle in this game, and that's never easy. We've seen Kittle get going last week on th or sorry last year on Thanksgiving. George Kittle beat Julian Love for a big touchdown. Just smoked him off the line of scrimmage. Love tried to hold him, uh, got the call, but still got a touchdown on the play. George Kittle has the ability to make things happen, but it starts with Jordan Mason. And the running game. Get run game going against the Seahawks. If the Seahawks load up and you feel like you have winning opportunities on the outside, go ahead and take them. But you've got to keep them honest with the run game. you got to be able to be consistent because if the defense doesn't stay honest, you're not going to be able to establish that uh, play action game and find those opportunities over the middle of the field and even somewhat move the opportunities. So if you've got a defense that's playing the way that they're playing, and they're being aggressive in the middle of the field and taking away deep crossers, well, then when you run your play-action plays, run whip routes, run, run things that are going to look like they're going inside and then bounce back out, take advantage of some of the zone coverages that way, or if they're running cover one, your man looks. So you can find opportunities where you can get the ball out quickly, but get it between the hash and the numbers instead of in between the hash marks down the middle of the field. Slight adjustments that Kyle Shanahan can make, but... 49ers are going to have some opportunities. Brandon Ayuk's going to have some opportunities, even though I expect the Seattle Seahawks to pay him a lot of attention in this football game. And when you're talking about um, how teams adjust to the 49ers 11 personnel, that's going to be interesting. So last week, the Arizona Cardinals, they brought a third safety on the field when the 49ers were in three wide receiver sets, weren't willing to give up the, uh, the smaller guy out there on the field against Jawan Jennings in that blocking and it kind of made it so the 49ers weren't as effective in 11 personnel running the football. So I'm curious to see if Seattle continues that trend. They try to stay big or if they go to their normal nickel package and if the 49ers can run the football against it. And I also expect McDonald to bring the blitz against Brock Purdy and Jake Brendel. Last week, Jake Brendel missed on a, a key adjustment where he should have slide protected to the right side. It made for an overload on one side, and a free rusher on the last play of the game. But it's Jake Brendel and Brock Purdy's problem to share because Brock's also got to be able to get rid of the football to George Kittle on that. So I expect Mike McDonald, the way he did last year against Baltimore, to make the blitzes multiple, come from different sides, different people, make it difficult on the 40 yards offensive line to determine who's coming. And then for Brock Purdy, just be willing to get rid of the football. Find your hot. I know we want to get vertical down the field, and if you can pick it all up, then yeah, you have an opportunity to go down the field and make them pay for those blitzes. I love that. But sometimes you just got to know when to not be greedy and what to take what's there. Take the easy one. And that's what I think he's going to have to do in this football game. So I think that's going to be a lot of fun. And then the 49ers just have to make sure they get Debo Samuel involved. Whatever it needs to be, jet sweep, quick screen, uh, finding opportunities to get Debo involved means now they have to focus on him in motion. So when they have to focus on him, then their attention slides from somebody else or you get the defense moving. But he has to be involved. And last week, he only got four targets. I know sometimes they double teamed him, but we've got to find opportunities to get Kit or sorry to get Debo the ball a little bit more. Last week, 12 targets for Kittle, 12 targets for Ayuk. I love it. But Jennings and Debo, they should probably get a little bit more. So we want to see a little bit more balance when it comes to getting Debo involved because of the effect that he has on the defense. So let's look at the 49ers defense and what they have to do in this football game 
who beat the Seattle Seahawks. And the same way that the 49ers need to get the run game going, they need to stop the running game for Seattle Seahawks. If the Seahawks get that running game going with Kenneth Walker, Zach Charbonnet, the 49ers are not going to be able to win this game. They have to slow them up. So early on, attention to Kenneth Walker, all 11 hats to the football, making sure you're making tackles, rallying to the ball and getting him to the ground. Do not count on your teammate to get him to the ground. You have to believe that you're going to have to be a significant role in getting him to the ground. So if there's three guys on him, make sure you're the fourth. If there's four guys on him, make sure you're the fifth. Do not let these guys get free and do not assume just because somebody has them wrapped up that the play is over. You learned hopefully your lesson last week against James Conner, 17 tackles in last week's game. That's not good football. So this week, make sure you, you uh, tune it up, get it right, and get after the ball carrier. So that's going to be huge. And you have to stop Kenneth Walker because you need to keep Seattle from staying ahead of the sticks. So the Seattle Seahawks, if you can get them on third and seven, you have a really good chance of getting off the field as a defense. The 49ers third down defense has been getting better and better and better as the season progressed. It started out really rough, but overall the defense continues to improve. That's a good sign for the Niners. How have they been doing it? Well, they've been aggressive with stopping the run, but not just with you know putting guys in the box, but also bringing run blitzes. That needs to continue this week. You need to make sure you get after it. Stop Kenneth Walker. Put the onus on Geno Smith to make key throws to his receivers. Now, he has talent. He can definitely do it. But you want to put the onus on him. Don't allow them to just get a run game going and run it down your throat. That's never going to be good for your defense. So, Nick Sorensen mixing up coverage, mixing in zone. I'm sorry, mixing in run blitzes is going to be a key in this football game. Being aggressive again dictating what happens on the field with your aggressiveness is what he's going to have to do. And he's just going to have to make Gino beat him. So you want to make sure they can't get into manageable third down situations. So early down success is going to be a key for both teams. Seattle can get early down success. They're going to have third and convertible. If the 49ers have success, then it's going to be longer and it's going to be tough for Seattle because they're not one of the best teams in the league when it comes to third down effectiveness. And we'll get into those numbers in just a second. They need to get after Geno Smith. And I know he's not a stationary target. He can run. We've seen him use his legs against the 49ers before, and he's done a pretty good job of getting extra yards when he gets outside the pocket. But he has been sacked 18 times this season. That is a lot. That's eight more than Brock Purdy. That's an opportunity to get after a quarterback and get some big-time negative plays. If you get a sack and you get a loss on the play, you are likely to get off the field on that set of downs. 49ers know that if they get Geno Smith for a loss, five, six, seven yards, and they put them behind the sticks, likely that drive is over. That's how significant sacks can be in this football game. Also, you get sacked on first down, the likelihood of you having enough success on second down with a run play, not good. So you can play more of a pass set, Allow Kenneth Walker, even if he gets four or five yards, still will force a third and long. So your defensive philosophy changes if you can get those plays. But I think they have to just pressure Geno Smith. Make him feel uncomfortable in the pocket. He is prone to make mistakes. He has made mistakes this season. He has thrown five interceptions. The 49ers want to be a team that can take advantage of that. And the way you do it is you get him uncomfortable in the pocket, and then he will make a mistake. He will either take a sack or he will force a football. He does have trust in his playmakers, and that's where you can take an opportunity to get the ball. And huge changes like that and sudden changes are what the 49ers need to do. So fluster Geno Smith in the pocket is going to be one of the key things. But you also have to slow down DK Metcalf. And it's been a little bit more simple in the past, right? Charverius Ward, go handle DK Metcalf. They're going to battle. DK will have some catches, but for the most part, Charverius Ward will do a pretty good job against him, and you'll be okay. But what Charverius Ward do we have? Is it all pro Mooney like we had last year that can compete with him, play in and play out? Or do we have the, the Charverius Ward we've seen this season that hasn't been as consistent and has had made some real bad mistakes? I think the 49ers are going to have to be multiple with their looks. I think sometimes they're going to have to double him. Sometimes put Mooney Ward on him. Sometimes let Demo roll with him. So we'll see what the 49ers do when it comes to DK, but they have to pay a lot of attention to him. Don't let DK get going. And I know Tyler Lockett and Jackson Smith and Jigbook can hurt you. They're very talented receivers. But DK Metcalf 
is the whole shot playmaker, big time ability guy. So we got to limit his effectiveness. And then with Tyler Lockett, you just got to make sure when he makes a catch, you're there. He'll go down. Uh, no yards after the catch for him. So the 49ers know what they have to do. We did see last year Jackson Smith and Jigba able to run the slot the slot fade. I expect to see that in the game plan this week. Last week, they were Arizona was unable to take advantage of that play against Diomino Lenore, but I'm sure Jackson Smith and Jigba will try on this one. So it's going to be interesting to see if they can get that done, but they've got to vary the looks. They've got to go ahead and double team him at times. Do not let him get behind you. Do not let DK Metcalf get a big time vertical throw down the field. Stay over the top. That's a key. Make him win with underneath routes. One thing about DK Metcalf, when he gets those long legs and long strides going, he's dangerous. But when he has to break off a route and catch a comeback route or something underneath, he's not as good at it. His his passing tree is not as good as a Brandon Ayuk or someone like that. He's more athletic, but his route tree is not as infinite. So you can go ahead and slow him down, make him catch plays underneath, rally and make tackles, put the onus on him to have uh, good hands on those plays. That's going to be a key for the defense. Now let's talk about third downs. 49ers offense right now, 46.6% converting on third down is very good. 49ers haven't had problems getting drives going, moving the football, averaging over 400 yards per game because they're moving the sticks consistently, being successful on third down. Their bugaboo is the red zone. We'll talk about that in one second. But 46.6 is pretty close to what they were last year when they were at full strength with Christian McCaffrey and Roland during the season. You look at the Seahawks, though. Their offense only converts at 37.3%. That's not very good. 49ers have an opportunity on defense to get off the field. That's why I was talking about early down success. You force third and six to third and uh, 10, you have a really good shot of getting off the field against the Seahawks. Their early down success determines how good they do on third down. Third and long is not their friend. So that's a weakness of their offense. Now you look at third down conversions allowed. 49ers defense allows it at 43%. Crazy, that's only 2% more than last season. And if you look at what they've done so far, it started at 60% against the Jets, stayed that way around Minnesota. And then since then, it's slowly gotten better and better and better. They're really good on third downs against the Patriots, really good on third downs against the Cardinals. And so they got off the field pretty consistently. The defense has been trending in the right direction in some very key categories. And this is one of them. They got to get this under 40% as the season progresses. But the good news is they're starting to win on third down, and that's important. And the Seahawks, their defense, elite. They 32.4%, they give up conversion rates on third down. That is really, really good. Anywhere around 30% is just elite. 49ers need to make sure they have third and manageables as well. It's a, it's a key for both teams. If you have third and one, third and two, your likelihood of getting a first down is a lot better than third and five and 36, third and six. And that just seems uh, to make the most sense. But early down success is key. And for the 49ers, winning on first and second down and not facing third down may be the most important thing for them in this game. But Seahawks are going to be very good on third down. That's going to be strength on strength. 49ers offense, really good. Seattle defense, really good. That's going to be a lot of fun to watch. Now, we know the problem for the 49ers is red zone offense. And it's not the 20 to 10. It's the 10 yard in. Last week, they were one in five going for it inside the red zone and trying to get into the end zone. They had to kick field goals. It was not a great performance for the 49ers offense in the red zone. A Arizona defense that last year they went nine for nine against. This time, they just couldn't get it going. And they've seen their TD rate inside the red zone fall all the way to 40%. Only 40% of the time, the 49ers score a touchdown when in the red zone. Last year, it was 68%. That's a huge fall off, and they've got to get a lot better. And I know Christian McCaffrey's not there, but there were opportunities in that game, open receivers, uh, open holes for the running backs that were missed. They're, they need to get better at executing in tight spaces with a lot of players around. And if they can, then they got shots to win a lot more football games. Seattle Seahawks at 63% TD rate, pretty good. Now they're scoring at a pretty high rate. And so we'll see if the 49ers defense can uh, match up with them. And the 49ers defense has been getting better. Their red zone defense got better last week against a very good Arizona Cardinals offense. The Arizona Cardinals came into that game with a touchdown rate of 72%. And the 49ers did a good job in the red zone. They actually brought their percentage of allowing touchdowns down from 58 to 53 after the Cardinals game. So 
what I was saying. Third down conversion rate allowed going down. Red zone touchdown rate allowed going down. Defense trending in the right direction. That's why I've been one of the ones that's still saying, hey, I'm not ready to have that kind of talk about Nick Sorensen because the defense is trending in the right direction. You look at the numbers and they just tell you a story about how this defense is getting getting better and better. And that's why I'm kind of optimistic about where they're headed and why they're still number five overall in the whole league in DVOA, which is really good. Now you look at the, the Seattle Seahawks, they're at 47% allowing touchdowns inside the red zone. So the 49ers are going to be going against a decent defense when it comes to red zone defense. They're going to have to make sure uh, they get it done and they need touchdowns. Touchdowns over field goals is got to be a key for these football teams and getting Debo more involved in the red zone, I think is going to be a key element. Uh, Kyle did it a little bit last week, getting Debo a four receiver side and they Arizona Cardinals did a good job matching up on the front side backside. Brandon Ayuk comes wide open over the middle of the field. He is a part of the progression. Brock Purdy stuck with it a little long and didn't come back. And I think that was the name of the game. The defense for Arizona did a good job of taking away the initial looks. And you just, when you're in the red zone, everything speeds up. You didn't have time to come back to the backside of his progression. If he did, they probably would add a couple touchdowns. So I think Brock Purdy is going to be working on that in this game, but it could make it a little bit easier getting Debo in the backfield and allowing him to motion move and uh, create some interesting matchups. Now, turnovers are going to be a big part of this football game. 49ers have had too many turnovers this season. Eight giveaways so far uh, through five games. The Seahawks at seven. So both teams have been prone to turning over the football. And usually it comes in waves for Brock Purdy. It's never just one. Usually it's a couple. And that's been a problem. Now you look at takeaways. 49ers cause double the takeaways the Seahawks. Eight takeaways so far this season. And we know that's not meeting what uh, Fred Warner wanted. He wanted three per game, which would have been 15. I think... Two per game is more realistic, so they're probably two off that mark. Seahawks have only created four takeaways, which is interesting because Mike McDonald's defense last year created a lot of turnovers. So the turnover differential, 49ers at zero right now. Eight giveaways, eight takeaways. It's evened out. Uh, Seahawks are minus three right now, have more giveaways than they have takeaways. Winning the turnover battle, winning on third down, winning in the red zone, those are going to be key for the 49ers winning this football game in Seattle. So these are elements the 49ers must win if they plan on winning the football game overall. And if they win those, more than likely they're going to win the time of possession, which is really good. So now I'm going to talk about my Wow That's Bold predictions. Wow That's Bold predictions brought to you by 49ersCutbackShop.com. Get your 49ers Cutback merch. Get your 49ers Inspired merch all available over there. Link is in the description section. Check it out going to be a lot of fun. Wow, that's bold prediction. Wow, that's really bold. <laughs> Whoa. 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 Got to be whoa, right? It's got to be whoa when it comes to bold predictions. And so ready to talk about the bold predictions this week. And I got a bold one. Brock Purdy's not going to have a single turnover in this game. I think he writes the ship I think last week you had one where a defensive player made a good play, and I think he thought he could get the ball to George Kittle. Uh, the second one, you know, he got hit. I think Brock Purdy's going to play a clean football game. I think last week was a little bit of an anomaly. Uh, he was missing throws. He just wasn't as crisp and as accurate as he normally is, um, and I think that he's going to get back to his his ways this week. So no turnovers for Brock Purdy. And then Debo. I think Debo's going to get in the end zone. I think they're going to use him in the red zone find a couple unique matchups that they like, and they're going to take advantage of Debo in the red zone, and he'll kind of do his best Christian McCaffrey impression, but they've got different ways, screens, jet sweeps, uh, also toss plays out of the backfield. I like Debo getting involved. I would even love a Debo toss play that turns into a throw down there inside the 10-yard line. Sneak one of your backup tight ends out there, get one of heavy sets, but with Debo in the backfield, get a toss play and let him find Eric Saubert in the back of the end zone or Jake Tungis. I think that could be something the 49ers go to in this game. Just from watching film, I think it would be open if they decide to go with a little bit of a trick play. Now let's talk about defensive. Wow, that's bold predictions. I think the 49ers are going to sack Geno Smith three times in this game. I think Geno is going to get a little panicked in the pocket and they're going to be able to get to him. Coach Nick Sorensen's been doing a good job mixing in blitzes and getting opportunities for guys to get home. 
Uh, Kyler Murray did a great job last week of avoiding some of those opportunities, but I don't think Geno Smith gets it done like Kyler Murray did. He's a little less athletic at this point in his career, and he doesn't exactly uh, isn't exactly willing to make some of the throws or can make some of the throws Kyler makes. So I think that happens. Then I think Diamond of the North is going to get an interception. I think you're going to get pressure on Gino, and Gino's going to throw the ball. And Demo has been close a couple of times, and I think he gets a pick in this game. I think he's going to make a big play that's going to help the 49ers defense overall. And that's what you need. You need Demo to make plays, and we've seen him do it already this year. And I think he does it again in this football game. And I just I, I like Demo in matchups against pretty much any of those receivers. He can compete. I think he's going to start getting the recognition that he deserves. So that's the wow. That's bold predictions. And now it's time for the 49ers versus Seattle Seahawks game prediction. And I'm taking the 49ers. And I, I know that the 49ers have struggled against the division, but I think the 49ers realize how important this game is against the Seattle Seahawks. They realize this is a must-win matchup. It's not going to be easy. You're heading into Seattle, and you're playing a very tough team. But I got the 49ers winning 27-23 in a hard-fought battle. I, I think the 49ers get it done, are able to hold on for a win, and kind of even this thing out. Both teams go to 3-3, three and three, and the 49ers reset. Hit a mini buy and get ready to welcome the Super Bowl champion Kansas City Chiefs to town. But it has to start with beating Seattle. And once that happens, you just got to uh, get everything rolling again. You got to make sure you're getting on the right page. But I think it would do the 49ers a lot of good to come out of this game with a win and then have that uh, buy to kind of get right, get healthy, get everything back together, reset. And I think that's what they're going to do in this football game. So game's coming up pretty soon. 49ers, Seahawks. Hopefully the 49ers get a big win. Let me know in the comment section what you think the score is going to be, if the 49ers are going to win or they're going to lose. I'm, I'm really curious what you have to say. Please like and subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Appreciate it. Uh, you know, this is 49ers Cutback on Believe Network brought to you by Bet Online. The game starts here. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Until then, stay safe. Remember, the right way is always the 49ers way.